Thank you, and good morning. That was the interactive part. <laughs> um, uh, as you were told, my name is Randy Cox. I'm the regional director for uh, OCC uh, for Russia, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia. All that really means is that when I travel, I go to somewhere that's colder. It doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, it's always colder. I want to ask you this morning, and this is another interactive part, I'll give you a heads up this time. Um, how many of you run or ride a bicycle? Quite a number of you, I think. I, I know it's true because I have to dodge you on the road here when I leave in the afternoons. but. Um, you know, when you're running, when you're riding a bicycle, you, you reach a point sometimes in your run or your ride where you don't know if you can make it up that next hill, if you can run that last mile. Uh, maybe there's a pain in your knee. Maybe there's, uh, <laughs> on the bicycle, a pain somewhere else. Um, but uh, essentially, you're, you're struggling uh, mentally. Am I going to be able to finish? And I want to ask today, what gets us from the point of thinking, I don't think I can finish, to actually finishing? Because we always do, don't we? Sometimes we finish by calling our wives and say, come pick us up. Uh, most of the time, though, we finish the ride, we finish the run, we make that last steep hill. Um, so, you know, what... I want to ask us, what is it that gets us to that point? And for me, sometimes, frankly, it's something very simple. It's just embarrassment. Uh, I, I don't want people to know that I couldn't do it. It's a very motivating thing for me. But in other cases, it might be something else. And, you know, sometimes, have you noticed that same hill or that same run is easier when you're with someone else? Isn't that interesting? Maybe it's competition. Um, maybe it's uh, you're trying to be healthier, trying to do something to the next step. But whatever the reason is, it's your reason why, right? It's, if, if you go out on that bicycle ride and your purpose is to enjoy the scenery, you're probably not going to climb the highest hill or run the longest run. You're going to enjoy it. But if you have purpose to ride that next local competition ride or maybe run in a marathon, you know that you have to, as Paul says, buffet your body, beat your body, literally. Um, sometimes when I do that, I feel like it's beat more than I've run or ridden. But you, you find yourself uh, pushing further, pushing harder to get to the next step, to train your body to do more, to do it longer and to do it better. And as I said, what I'm talking about is understanding your reason why. Um, why you're riding, why you're run, uh, running. Franklin spoke a little bit about this on Monday when he asked us, what would we do when he spoke about Pastor Saeed? He was put in prison for preaching the gospel. How would we respond to that? Uh, on Tuesday, uh, Reverend Dr. Stephen Kelly said the same thing. What would we do if our family kicked us out of our home, they disowned us, and our best friends came to kill us because we were a Christian? If we don't have a good reason why, we're not going to stand very firm in the face of those circumstances, are we? What would you do? What would I do? I met a pastor in Russia maybe 15 years ago now who told me the story of his father. Uh, his father had uh, started a, a small church in the city of Voronezh. Um, this is during the, the Soviet times, the time of the, of, the, of the communist regime. And soon after it was uh, started, the KGB showed up, they closed the doors, and they shipped his father off to prison for uh, uh, nine years. His father was released for prison, from prison after nine years, and he went back to the same location, to the same city, started the church again. And not long before the KGB showed up, they closed the doors again, they shipped him off to prison for five years. He gets out of prison a second time, and uh, and he goes back and he starts the church again. <laughs> I 
told myself I wouldn't do this. When he gets out, he's in there for three years. He gets out. They've burnt the church down. He comes back. He rebuilds the church physically and then starts again. This time, <laughs> he seems to have outweighed the Soviet Union because it fell apart. And his church today is over a thousand people. But the question that I asked myself then, and I still ask myself, is what would I do? And sometimes I don't like the answer. And, and I think I've come to the conclusion that part of the answer of why has to do with our passion and commitment to our why. In fact, I would say that passion and commitment are probably measures of our why. They're indicators of how strongly we believe in our, in our reason. If we're not passionate, if we're not committed to our reason, we're not going to climb the hill. We're not going to stand firm. So let me ask you a question. Why are you here? Why are you working at SP or OCC or BGEA? Why are you on this planet? Why are you in Boone? Why are you here? Are you committed enough and passionate enough to stand up for that why? If your family kicked you out of your house and your friends came to kill you, what would you do? Are you committed? Are you passionate? In 1 Corinthians 9.22, Paul wrote that he wanted to become all things to all people so that some might believe. In fact, he says he became all things to all people so that by all possible means some might believe. He's saying he did whatever it took. He was committed to his why. He was passionate. In verse 24, he tells us to run in a way to win. That means that we run with purpose, that we want run with reason. We run with a why. Obviously, to this crowd anyway, Jesus is the ultimate example of why. He died on a cross for what he believed. In Romans 10, 9, Paul tells us about this, that because of that, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, that we will be saved. And this should excite us. This should be our reason why. If we're here in this room working with this organization, this should be our reason why. And we should get excited about it. We should be passionate about it. It should be the motivation behind everything that we do. We have a lot of video that we show. We have a lot of pictures on the wall. And, and I hope that hasn't muted your passion in the sense that it becomes familiar. It becomes something that you're used to, not something that motivates you. Maybe you've just gotten lost in the details of your work here. And that's really easy to do. Really easy to do. Sometimes I think that's why the pictures are on the wall. It's to motivate us. It's to keep us focused on why. If you find yourself in that position, if it's not passionate, if it's not as passionate as you want it to be, go home tonight and read one of the Gospels. Maybe go pack a shoebox and find a kid in the neighborhood and give it to him. That'll charge your batteries real quick. Go volunteer somewhere in town. Find someone with worse circumstances than you and just sit and listen to them for a while. Do something. Do everything to be passionate and committed to your why. Passionate and committed to the gospel. Whether you're answering the phone today or accepting donations or organizing churches or organizing distributions of shoeboxes or whatever it is, the My Hope Project, do it in a way that's passionate 
and know that you're a vital part of the gospel as it flows through this organization. Do it with commitment and passion. In a way, you will hear Christ say, well done, good and faithful servant. So as you go to prayer, I'd ask you to pray for each other that you'd be passionate and committed to our common reason why, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.